Tom Holland's book, Dominion, is a flamboyant, if somewhat erratic, gallop through the history of Western civilization. It seeks to show how the modern world is far more Christian than either its secularist admirers or Christian critics imagine. The English historian argues that Western societies are still utterly saturated by Christian concepts and assumptions. From his study of the ancient world, he came to realize that in his morals he was not a Spartan or a Roman at all. His belief in God had faded during his teenage years, he wrote, but that did not mean that I had ceased to be Christian. He emphasizes that his book is not a defense of Christianity. Indeed, he is an unbeliever. But that he tries to be objective, unlike some other historians, that he sets the record straight on issues like ancient pagan culture, Galileo, and the grotesque slander against Pope Pius XII has to benefit Christianity's image. It may seem rather churlish then for a Catholic priest to fault the book, if somewhat reluctantly. But three major flaws in it lead to a false conclusion that could have disastrous consequences for our culture. Firstly, the star of the story as given here tends to be Saint Paul rather than Jesus. This was a view in Protestant Bible studies a century ago, but immensely influential though Paul was, he never aspired to be anything other than a disciple of Jesus. Secondly, although Christ's resurrection is often mentioned in Dominion, the principal focus is on his crucifixion. Indeed, the American publishers put Salvador Dali's famous painting of the crucifixion on the cover. This emphasis, however, tends to reduce Christianity to an ethical system, so that Mr. Holland, for example, can believe that being a good person makes him a Christian. But the real driving force in Christianity has always been Christ's resurrection and the supernatural hope it gives. It was the hope of resurrection, of eternal life and happiness, that attracted both Jews and Gentiles, a point St. Paul made in several of his letters. He reminded the Ephesians, for example, that they had been without hope and without God in the world. It was this hope down the centuries that kept ordinary people devoted to Christ, inspired the vision of parents handing on the faith to their children, gave zeal to missionaries, courage to the martyrs, and strength in suffering to both individuals and communities. Thirdly, an historian is not a theologian, but if he is going to assess the impact of Christianity, he needs to have some understanding of what Christianity is and what it's not. This will significantly affect the way he evaluates the faith's impact on life and society. Dominion, however, doesn't seem to take into account that much of what is viewed today as Christian is actually an earlier deviation from it or a rejection of it. An example here is Luther's Scripture Alone slogan, a foundation principle of the Protestant Reformation, which brings us to the author's concluding remarks. The standards by which terror, persecution and slavery are condemned today, he rightly notes, are Christian. Nor does it seem likely that these standards will quickly change, he says, even if churches across the West continue to empty. At this point, he has left history in favour of fantasy. If we dig out the foundations of a civilization, in this case, 
Catholic doctrine, then we must expect the building to collapse soon after. Indeed, despite the evidence he presents in his final chapter, he doesn't seem to realise just how much has already crumbled, how rapidly we are returning to the ancient barbarism which he abhors. In the mid-1800s, John Henry Newman recognised that the choice the modern world faced was between Catholicism and atheism, between hope and despair. Time has only made that choice and its implications more evident and urgent. What then about dominion? Despite the issues raised here, it is a great read. But its real topic is not history. It is the meaning and purpose of our own existence. Tom Holland may not agree, but his book vividly presents the great choice that Newman identified, and it calls us to take sides, aware of what is at stake.